This is for the players. I'm Ryan Betson, and this is for the players, the pop culture's PlayStation podcast. With almost 40 years of playing PlayStation, almost five years in the games media combined, we thought we'd throw a hat into the ring and join that PlayStation conversation. This is where Josh normally jumps in and tells you, if you want to join that conversation, head over to facebook.com slash thepopculturist, as well as uh, Instagram and Twitter and other social medias. This is where he normally is his strength. So, but if you want to have the big conversation, head to facebook.com slash groups slash thepopculturist and join that conversation. But if you really, really like what we do, head to patreon.com slash the pop culturist. It's a damn good time over there. And to my my right, left of you guys, is Paul James from player2.net.net. You mean friend. Josh Saunders minus B, <laughs> right? You've just relocated yeah, all just the hair. Yeah, shuffled it here, maybe a bit on the arms. Whatever you are a hairier man than Josh in, yeah, in the arm area. It's called insulation. It'll keep me warm in the winter. <laughs> hey, or when the ice age hits. Yeah, I'm good. How are you, man? I'm, I'm real good. It took me like a, so many more attempts than usual to get that intro down. Okay, it's it's staggering it's how I rely on Josh. <laughs> oh, and the other host, because that's the thing, because like, uh, you, so you you run pretty much the YouTube channel for Player Two. Yeah, at the moment, um, mostly hoping to build it out. I've been watching the stuff for a while. Cause we we've met a couple of times, different conventions. Different events. Um, and I was like, yeah, I'll check out your stuff. And then it was really weird when you walked in, like, oh shit, it's, it's, it's Paul from Player Two. Yeah, like yeah. you had that moment. No, we're not that far along. No, no, because like, I'm just so used to seeing you on on, oh, yeah, on, on my TV. This is right there. In yeah, person. yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, tell us, tell the fine folk a little bit about yourself before we get these things rolling. Oh, look, uh, teacher by profession. Oh, uh, really? So, you uh, all maths because I'm a massive dork. Um, but uh, senior senior maths, so yep. VC maths. Uh, been doing the whole games thing since I was about four. Been writing about them since I was about five. No, uh, <laughs> uh, for about the last six years or so. Yep. Um, I was working a little well on the side, uh, working a little website called AMH Network. It was a music site first and foremost. It was all about alternative music and stuff. Uh, I, have a, I have a leaky glass, apparently. <laughs> um, all about music, uh, alt music first and foremost, but then decided to add an entertainment section, at which point uh, my mate who ran the site got me on board, took off from there. Uh, that shut down when he had a kid oh, three, four years ago. Oh, yeah. About three years ago, I reckon now. Uh, and just as that was kind of folding, Player 2 was looking to spread its wings a little bit further. I spotted it because I just had a few little interactions with them via Twitter, nothing more. Yeah. Um, but spotted that they were looking for more people, jumped on board. Um, well, threw it's my been, hat in the ring. It's so, been love ever since. And th- there I've been. So since then, mm. been doing reviews for them since the moment I rocked up. Any articles that just happened to spring to mind. Uh, and then kind of kicked off, patched the video games club for the website, which I've been doing for about the last 18 months or What's so. What's the link to the YouTube channel? Uh, oh, sorry, the YouTube. Uh, YouTube.com slash player2au. Done. Um, and... Uh, and also most recently a show called The Insider that I've been trying to do it's just me talking about whatever it is that I feel like talking about on any given week no, that's good stuff man keeps me busy uh, totally check out the YouTube channel uh, and uh, give them a sorry, the likes and subscribes I, sorry Matt if I just put the wrong link in there my bad yeah. <laughs> it's alright it's fine Matt they'll get there I'll tag it in the bottom door it's all good but uh, yeah you've come to, to join that uh, the PlayStation conversation how are you, how you feeling yeah, just, oh, I love this, this is, like, have you guessed it in many other shows before uh, no, I mean, <gasps> I rock up on Player 2 stuff all the time to the point where I think people are just sick of my voice, but no, no <laughs> nothing for anyone else Ooh. yet, so this is my first guesting sort of role, or <laughs> even guest role. Well, before, the, the way we kick things off is we ask the question, in the same way you open patched, what have you been playing this week? Next Mark now. Um, so the new Housemark. Housemark game, yeah. Uh, look, I picked it up, what day come out? Tuesday? Um, uh, yeah, Tuesday, Wednesday, last week, I think. This past week has been the last week of the school term, so I've been flat out uh, reports and all that usual school stuff. I'm not going to bore you with that. Um, so Especially because it's math. Yeah. Numbers and shit. <laughs> um, so I, I didn't actually get into Next Mark until about Thursday, thereabouts. Yep. I messed around for a little bit, but it was still very interrupted time. Didn't actually get through a full playthrough. I made sure, though, before I came over here, got myself through that first playthrough. Appreciate it. On Rookie. Ah, uh, dude. Got to start somewhere. Difficulty levels don't count, man. That game is hard as shit. <laughs> so it's in the same vein of, of uh, House Mark with the twin stick shooter. Sort yeah, of. it still totally fits that mold. You know, it's different to Resogun, but it's it's your top down sh- uh, sort of sh- uh, shmup there. And nice. 
I love it. Feeling it? Yeah, yeah, no, it? yeah. Uh, lots of voxels. They look great. Look, the, the, that's the game is trick gorgeous. is the voxel. They should have just called themselves Voxel the yeah. studio, and then they just go from there. The game looks gorgeous. Uh, super challenging, forgiving when you are playing on rookie. Like I still died plenty, but yeah. um, unlimited lives. So like you, you cycle through your five, and they force to continue. That's where your your uh, your combo counter kind of resets, and you lose all your stuff. But you can just keep going from that exact same point when you move up through the higher difficulty levels, which I haven't done yet. Um, in time give it another day or so um, <laughs> as soon as as soon as you're done with that you can then start moving they, they <coughs> cap you to a certain number of lives and mm. then I think oh geez, I don't even know what they asked for the highest it might be 10 or thereabouts I don't know I've got to do a bit more more time I haven't spoken about it but I'll probably end up reviewing it So yeah nice uh, the, the, that's pretty much it for the week it's been a busy week yeah it's been a busy week um, I mean a little bit of stuff on my Switch but that's not quite PlayStation related yeah what are you playing on the Switch though Mario Kart okay cool that you and, can't. And, oh, and maybe it was like on this cross platform no, it's, it's got to be those sorts of things that are just short and sharp yeah. and a bit of arms as well but uh, just short and sharp that I can kind of get through in a short amount of time because I've just not had the time this week But yeah so well, I've spent the better part of about 15 minutes with Ocean Horn yeah actually I watched the partner play that uh, last night while I was busy playing Mario Kart on my Switch she's up on the screen playing Ocean Horn <laughs> I see I don't because I don't have that strong history with Zelda or anything so I I'm not getting the whole like it's a you know it's a Zelda clone. I'm like this is an interesting. It's cool, just a solid game. Yeah, it's a cool, cool little game. Like it's um it controls interesting. Like it's in terms of I guess because it is that throwback to old Zelda. It's very simple and you know it's fine. Yeah, I'll, I think I spend some more time with that. Like I can't judge a game on the 10, 15 minutes I spent with it. Are you looking at going? How the hell did this come from a mobile game? Yeah, because I'm, <laughs> I'm playing it on Switch. You know, because yeah. I'm lazy. I need portable games. Uh, yeah, I was like, all right, I'll spend some time with it. Yeah. It's fine. I, I, I think I'll get more more out of it. Uh, and of course, I'm spending some time with the Crash Bandicoot. I haven't gotten there yet. Uh, you, we'll, we'll you talk will. more about this you later. Will. But yeah, so, uh, I, I'm so I, for my fix. I streamed as of time of recording last night for about three hours with uh, the first Crash. Yep. Happy with that. Shit's good. Shit's real good. Like it's stunningly beautiful. Um, like it's so it's not running at. I, with the sort of their marking they're talking about how it's 4k you know like it's all those sort of little in, puns yeah yeah it's sort of implying that it's 4k well it is 4k on the pro but it's upscaled 1440 yeah you know so it's, it's not perfect 4k which i'm kind of bummed about but it's pretty at the same close time it gives a shit yeah um the one thing that, in, that i did find really interesting it's running at 30 oh okay really? um only because remember there was being a trailer a while back that had it running at 60 and Did they like, specifically state it was running? No, at they 60? never stated, but the trailer was running at sixty. Oh, okay, so it's like, oh shit, this gonna run. This game's gonna might, might run at sixty. It'd that be would smooth. be good. Smooth, but no, it's a locked thirty. And if you're playing on a Pro or PS4, it's smooth as crap. Apparently, so awesome. I like that's that. a bonus. Um, yeah, I'll get to it at some point. The one of the biggest things from the I'm first on one, break. at least. Oh yeah, you're like, <laughs> that's the benefit of school of being a teacher. You like constantly uh, get breaks. Look, a lot of my colleagues are going to be smashing their heads up against the wall getting work done over the holidays. The reason I was so tired and didn't get any gaming done this week is I got it all as much as I could done during that last week of term. Yeah. So I can just spend all holidays playing <laughs> Valkyria, playing Crash, and anything else. I feel like. Lovely. Well, it's one of the, one of the, one of the big things because you won't know this not, not having played Crash before, but uh, the original Crash came out prior to the Dual Shock. So it didn't yeah. have analog support. Um, so if, when you go play it on your Vita or your PS3, where you know where you can play your PS1 classics, uh, you have to use directional. And it kind yeah. of it it would really benefit from that like sort of precision of an analog stick. So having now analog support in the remaster is fantastic. Make a big difference? Does it make it easier, oh, yeah. or harder? Um, or? It, it allows you to sort of do a, the platform a little bit better. Like, <laughs> I still remember playing that that chase scene in uncharted 4 mm. like the and it's very the, you know yeah it's still see, very clucky obviously that's the original game more or less but that's the thing so this is a incredible remaster and remake but they are very uh, respectful to the source material in such a way that even some of that clunk is still there oh okay not in the same way that ukulele like ukulele has that homage clunk yeah okay. which i did which i didn't didn't land for me at all yeah where i, I think i because i have nostalgia for crash so it's kind of biased I have nostalgia for Banjo Kazooie, and even some of that clunk in Ukulele really drove me up the wall. Yeah, like I oh, don't get me wrong, still love the game. It was good fun, but it, it, there was <coughs> enough of those little things. I'm like, no, I'm not nostalgic for this sort of crap. Then I polish it up. Mm. I don't want this. Well, apparently there's a big update that just came out for Banjo, uh, Banjo Kazooie U- for Ukulele. Apparently, yeah, they updated the old uh, the old N64. They're giving us really a third impressive. one at last. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> woo. That's not 
you know nuts and bolts and that crap <laughs> yeah so look it, it plays a bit better it plays so this is the tough thing right this is when nostalgia goggles come in in my head it looked that good in my oh, head uh crash did yeah like when I, you go to eight-year-old ryan and he's like this is amazing <laughs> you know if someone, it's like, like he's real yeah, it's like it's fur k <laughs> <laughs> uh but yeah so like for me like when you're not focusing on it and you're just playing the game it's like yeah, this is exactly how i remember it and then when you actually get to sit there and look at it for a while you're like no nah, this is really good and then you good. when you see the comparisons you look at it and you're like that game looked like crap <laughs> It's what PS1 did, but it looked like crap. Um, but I played a lot of PS1 games this week, actually. Uh, on Tuesday, I streamed, finally, I know you're going to appreciate this, Harvest Moon Back to Nature. Yes. Because, like, I talk about that game... Australia's biggest Harvest Moon fans right here. Yeah. Um, like, for me, it was like... Fast up the audio, dude. I need like I, I, I every episode of everything, I'm like, Harvest Moon Back to Nature is a really good game. And then everyone's like, but why? I'm like, it's a good game. Just trust me. I'm right. like, just trust Let's do me. It. I'm like, well, stream it. I'm like, done. Everyone's like, this is really bland and boring. I'm like, shut up. <laughs> this is fantastic. <laughs> I'm building a farm. I'm going mining. I foraged all the all the truffles. Just because Stardew Valley and Farmville, no, not scratch like, Farmville. Um, <laughs> just because Stardew Valley wasn't out. This is this is the shit that led to that. This is yeah. what makes it what it is now. Oh man, that's 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 the game that I go back to at least once a year. And, I, and now we yeah. got one coming for PS4. <sighs> Light of hope. Fills me for the now, let's just make sure that the viewers remember that I was the one that wrote in the week before you declared you it's did. not going to happen. Dude, the worst thing. And then, and then I messed with your head after the announcement going, told you. And you start, shit, did you know like something? Deep, like, no, mate, right, I had no like, idea. You know, because we're, like, we're both, quote unquote, in the industry well, we, we, in yeah, like, we get, a very subtle way. We get the press way. releases and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, because I don't, I don't have any PR for like, uh, well, I guess Natsume. Natsume. You yeah. know, I don't know who they're, who they're guys in here in um, Australia. Star? Is it five star? Maybe. So it's five I think, star. I think. No, it's five star. Like we're good with those guys. Like we're good. Yeah. A lot of they're fantastic. Away. We love you, five star. No, oh, they're dude. That five star are fantastic. Um, so that you, were, I thought you knew something that you were just trying to like prep me. You know, and I just and I led you down that garden path yeah. as well afterwards. <laughs> Man, I had no idea. Are you stoked as shit for this new oh, Harvest Moon? I'm looking forward to it. Like I haven't played one in many years. I didn't bother with uh, what was it, the DS kind of spin-off thing well, well, the um, backstory of that yeah so the, the story of the seasons key, yeah the That's key the creator of, of um, Harvest Moon did left, leave Natsume and went to uh, Marvelous and made um, yeah story of seasons story of seasons which I sort of enjoyed it's okay it's a little clunky like I said it's not quite what I wanted yeah um, but in the same vein I don't like I think because I what I want is more back to nature so have you have you spent a bit of time playing Stardew Valley yeah. Okay. I haven't even touched that. Oh, it's, it's on solid, my list. Man. It's maybe one of those ones I get to these holidays. I think you um, should. It's it's all the farming that you love mixed with very simple, small RPG elements, but it's predominantly what you love. It's building your farm. It's building relationships. It's you know finding a partner in the game, and you know this awesome. All, it's old. all the good things of Harvest Moon, but with some RPGs. Now this may result in us going slightly off PlayStation, but it's on Harvest Moon topic. <clears throat> What's the pinnacle of that series? Welcome to your Harvest Moon cast. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Harvest Moon two on the GB, uh, the Game See, Boy. I, like, where I my, my love for Harvest Moon started with Back to Nature, so then it went to a couple from there. Like I, I very rarely have like, gone back. I've gone. I've played some that have come out since. Like yeah, I played okay. A Wonderful Life. I played uh, the other one that was on PS2. So you've basically only ever known them in 3D for the most yeah. part. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. For me personally, the the 2D ones are the pick uh, the pick of the lot. Specifically, wow. the second one. So the one that was on the Game Boy Color. So this makes you happy with, with Hope of Light. Looks like it's going back to that sort yeah. of isometric. Yeah, it does. Uh, it does seem to be that. Yeah. yeah. Which I don't know. We'll see what happens. But oh, I'm, Stardew Valley I'm Valley nails it, man. Like yeah. in terms of that perspective, it and really that's why adds I was interested in Stardew Valley, and I just haven't gotten to it because reviews and life and man, getting so, married, so and all that sort of crap. That, uh, Sorry, that I don't mean missed. that sort of crap. Sorry, man. Yeah. <laughs> Wedding's Sorry. great. It's right, I'm married. I know it's crap. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> um, but yeah, that's pretty much what I've been playing. Uh, old games, and then a remastered old game. That's exciting. I'm okay with that. Yeah, I'm pretty cool. Love with me it. some old games, but uh, old things are always are good. Ones. One of the one of the best things you do want is new things. And when yeah. I say new things, I mean the news. Really bad segue. Got there in the end. It worked. Had the word new in it. That's Let's it. it. That's, that's what I was going like new, new news. News. New. Nah. This is the segment where we Jeez. talk about all the PlayStation things that have happened this week. Well, the ones that we interest us anyway, and it's called inform the players. Now, all of this is going to be really, really shitty, uh, only because I said this is 
for those of, this is some inside baseball this is josh's show i just come in bullshit and make it look and real then good. move to my lounge room and just make it look real good yeah because like i i come in i'm like what's <laughs> up and then i leave so like you know so this is like all this all the prep everything comes through josh and he's like i'm super sick today i can't do it here's the file i'm like oh fuck i have to read <laughs> like oh, the reason we went into youtube was so i didn't have to read yeah, no, none of that sort of stuff we can just talk and spit out crap let's just make up news yeah pff, fuck it all right harvest moon's coming out tomorrow get excited <laughs> black ops 4 is coming out next week oh shit i like how we rather than be like it's coming at some point like no nah, everything's like within a week from now, now. <laughs> Do you know Black Ops 4 came out last Tuesday? We no actually got sent the press release. We're the ones breaking the news exclusively. <laughs> Exclusive. Kicking things off is an article about Guardian Con. Fuck if I know what that is. But the Destiny fan convention Guardian Con, well, I should have just read that sentence. That would have really nailed it down for me. Uh, met its lofty charity goal this year, having raised uh, more than a million dollars for pediatric research before the official uh, for the show officially kicks off. Two-day convention running Friday, June 30th through to Saturday, June 1st in Tampa, Florida, has raised $1.2 million for the St. Jude's Christian uh, Children's Research Hospital in the week preceding the event. The charity gaming stream was called Hashtag Little Lights, and concluded today as when this was written uh it hit the target but campaign organizers are still counting the donations coming in it's fantastic saint jude is a non a non-profit pediatric treatment facility known for its research into catastrophic children's diseases destiny yeah dude like see one side it's destiny destiny is pretty sweet uh, and it's such a solid community behind destiny and two gamings and charities man Man, those two seem to be just getting more and more linked. To, like the things that go on for Extra Life and all those sorts of events that come along. Um, can I throw in a slight player two plug? Here? Go nuts! In August, we're having a live stream um, for the Terry Campisi Foundation. Yep. I uh, rugby. Matt lives in Canberra, so whatever. But um, <laughs> either way, he's uh, you know raising heaps of money for that. We have got a goal of a few thousand dollars in mind. That's sometime in August. Like, and it's just all these little sites seem to do, and and the big ones too yeah. have, seem to have these sorts of little events going on. Like it, there's really giving audiences out there, and it's fantastic. And like all of us who are trying to organise those things are really appreciative. Well, we're in the same vein. Like we we're, we're going, we want to try to do the 24 hour light. You know, uh, that's extra life yeah, thing. That's the sort of thing we <clears throat> like. We want to give it a give it a, a good solid go, and then die. And just see what happens. And if we die, at least we'll be live streamed and then we'll make some money out of it. What it's about is about the time you start it. Yeah. You start in the evening. That way... Random beeping going on in... Oh, <laughs> the Elgato is trying to do things. Shut up, Elgato. You're fine. What you saying? Um, <laughs> yeah, start in the evening. That way you've had a, the entire day to rest up plus the night before. Yeah, good. And then you start to wind in from there and you go through your 24... But it's, it's like doing one day of E3 versus, you know, probably 48 hours with yeah, E3 like point. we normally do inside mm. i do like that i like because we, we, we're trying to think how we would do it and what, what would we would raise money for but like it's like the charity part's easy like we know we're gonna we, we know we probably get some money together for charity yeah. but the other thing was like how are we gonna survive yeah. <laughs> like do we are we gonna have that rule as someone has to be playing something at any one time like can do you you know if you pass controllers that like you can have a nap and then it, or you go get food <laughs> or, or you have to both or, be present the entire or time you have to pee like does someone have to be on camera playing at all times like just get the cup under. yeah <laughs> we have the two drink bottles we have like the one drink bottle for water one drink bottle for pee yeah. and then after like 18 hours someone drinks the pee you know it's just and then you've got a number two well, everyone's got a real problem good thing these mics don't pick up the smell <laughs> we've got no smell of vision but no that's fantastic like de- the power of destiny to bring a mi- like over a million dollars is fantastic it's so good oh I think it's brilliant um, look, a- anyone that's doing anything for charity deserves at the very least a bit of money and a pat on the back that's true. Should these guys get a pat on the back, though? So Sony has decided to take down a game that has that was claiming to contain the fastest platinum trophy ever made. Now you're a platinum, you're, you're a trophy hunter a little bit, like to an extent, to an extent, yeah. not like hardcore, but no. it's more interest. I like them. Eurogamer reports that Sony quickly pulled the indie game titled Five Star, a thousand top rated, from the PSN and asked the developer to change the game's name and remove any mention of trophies. The Platinum Trophy reportedly could have been earned in 20 minutes as it only consisted of easy interactive title title puzzles made out of 4K wallpapers. Additionally, the game was priced at just 98 cents American and apparently 5 star, 1000 top rated was created to advertise the developer's Facebook page which sells a bunch of PS4 themes. A PSN game with a similarly, similarly easy Platinum Trophy is My Name is Mayo which can be earned by pressing X 10,000 times. Look, 
Um, I do love me a platinum. <coughs> I love me trophies. This is a disgrace. And <laughs> what, what's what's even worse? And I know, look, there's there's polarizing opinions in that space. Like, there's people who love their platinums. Like, sweet, cheap platinum. Yeah, our buddies, I, over, I, I like our buddies to, over the Explosion Network with, you know, Platinum Explosion. Yeah. You know, hashtag any trophy counts. So... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's it yeah look, that's gold uh it doesn't you're wrong um sorry dylan but uh look i the fact that it's trying to promote a facebook page they're clearly not caring too much about how much money they make otherwise yeah. they wouldn't charge it basically a dollar for it they um what what frustrates me more is the lack of curation that's going on at playstation's end mm. How is a game like this slipping through the cracks? How is and a game like other games My Name is Mayo and, and other ones story. like that? Like people, yeah. And then you've got, yeah. Sorry, then you've got those other games that <clears throat> that PlayStation for some reason make it super, super hard to get a platinum mm. for. Um, I guess best case is Gone Home, brilliant game. I, I guess you can finish it in a few minutes flat. So PlayStation gone, nah, we don't want any of that. Yeah, dumb. Give me the platinum. I might actually play through it again on PlayStation. <laughs> I played it on PC originally, got it for PS4, show, uh, showed the partner. She's like, oh, yeah, not really for me. I'm like, all right, sweet. Well, then I'll do it. No, I'll move on to something else. Yeah, because yeah, well, for a lot of people, Give me a platinum, I'll, the I'll trophies, especially a platinum, is a big motivator to finish a yeah. game. And it's like the ultimate sign of respect to that developer. They're like, I loved your game so much that I invested the potential and hundreds of hours yeah. to get that platinum. Or half an hour to get My Name's Mayo's. Yeah, on that one too. <laughs> Look, uh, but to an extent, PlayStation's even respecting that a little bit these days because they're sending out emails to people who platinumed uh, Horizon. Like Horizon like, is an example. He, here's a free theme that only you can get. I think something similar happened with Bloodborne, and yeah. I'm sure there's been other examples as well. And look, that, so that's amazing because one of the biggest problems with the trophies as it is now, I don't know whether the Xbox has the same thing with achievements because um, I'm not a trophy hunter. I'm not an achievement hunter. Sim- sim- simply with the nature of what we do, total hashtag, uh, hashtag first world problem. We play so many games that I don't have the ability to sit there and just mash play it out to the end. And that's largely why I'm not going for the platinum on every single yeah. game. So what's next? I've got to move on to the next thing. Yeah. Uh, and, and so my understanding is that there's no reward outside of bragging rights and then number next to your yeah. name. And I, so it's nice to have that additional incentive. I think PlayStation, are re- although mind you, it's probably like five years too late. So when am I going to get my incentive for getting my thousand top rated platinum? That's it. They like just give me give me one of those those images <clears> and <throat> I can just set it as my theme. Now. Well, see, that's the question. If that's pulled from the, and it just sings troll all, all, all in the background. <laughs> <laughs> so if that's pulled from the store. Does that mean no? You but apparently, lose the apparently, apparently it will, uh, there's the potential for it to come back. If they apparently a lot of the PlayStation's concern is around the fact that they're advertising this as a free platinum or basically a yeah. free platinum. If they scrap that, game's back on the store. That's even worse. That is so much it, like it's just about the advertising that they. That See, I, I think that's what that's what makes this a bad is it's the conniving. Like it's blatantly promoting yeah. something else. Like my name is Mayo is a joke that went a little too far, yeah. but this is like oh no no we just want to go we just want to sell you themes yeah uh, I don't know it's it's crap I'd side get lost. note by the way speaking Curation. of themes <clears throat> when I've gone to the US uh, store to fight to this ask, ask some things that you can't get in the Australian store I really need to get me a US account um, dude it's really easy just find a hotel and just make that the address and Done. I never check it um, yeah so you just I go there and have a look see of what the cool Finally. thing <laughs> and I looked up like oh, what, what do they have available and they just have fucking a insane amount of themes and avatars and it just bloats their store like you look at what's the new releases for this week it's three games and 58 themes yeah true look there's a bit of that and we don't quite get that we're not the there extent. yet it's coming but we also miss a lot of the games too and there's some of them that are good ones <clears throat> case in point Adventures of Pip I want that on my PS4 I nagged the developers I gave up well, I had another one I don't know I, why I the hell I didn't create the, a US account I should have I had the VR game uh, they just ignored Australia <laughs> Yeah, it happens. Which you got it on PC? No, I'm not a dog. Yeah, it's like it's a PC. Like, no, no, no. I want it on PlayStation. <laughs> if I if I want it on PC, I'd be playing it right now. Yeah. And the reason well, they, they gave me a free copy, and then like, cool, thanks. The reason I, I tweeted you was because I want to play it on PS4. You fuck. Well, this this <laughs> this is a team that I actually interviewed. Well, uh, oh, wow. since the player two, like I'd done an interview with them. That this was way before release. And, yeah. Oh yeah, it's going to come to all these platforms. I'm like, great, this will be awesome. I can't wait. And then off camera, I can't wait to play it afterwards. Still haven't. <laughs> Any chance? No, it's been two years now. Well, and like, it, it, uh, this is a side conversation, but that, that, that ruins shit. Like, example is there's a VR game called I Expect, I Expect You to Die, which is sort of yep. like this cool little yeah, I've uh, heard the name. detective sort of secret agent, but like, you're really shit secret agent. It's like 007, but bad. Um, it took three months for it to come out in Australia. So I was like, uh, when I when I saw it, I wanted it. And then when it finally came, I'm like, eh, I don't want it anymore. 
lost interest. No, fair enough. That's the worst. Speaking of losing interest, <clears throat> uh, a report from Kotaku confirms that there will be no single player DLC for Mass Effect Andromeda. Instead, team members have been moved to other projects, such as the Dragon Age sequel. Uh, Kotaku's Jason Schreier, who previously mentioned that the plans for sequel were shelved in May, had the following quote. <clears throat> While reporting the news, I had been I had been pretty sure that Mass Effect Andromeda wouldn't be getting any single player DLC. There are a few people left at Bioware Montreal who could even work on it, but I wanted to be more confident. So over the past few weeks, I've confirmed with the news confirmed the news with three sources familiar with the company's plans, all of whom spoke anonymously so as to not jeopardize their careers. Unless Bioware decides to make some sort of drastic pivot, plans can always change. Mass Effect Andromeda will not be getting any single player DLC. Now I've and not so played Mass Effect Andromeda. Died. But you did. You finished it. You said you enjoyed it. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Look, it's not as good as um, the trilogy itself, but there's plenty of nuggets of really good stuff in there that I really thoroughly enjoyed. It doesn't surprise me that this happened. The last time something like a game got pulled apart for facial animations and that sort of stuff was Assassin's Creed Unity, and it didn't get a big suite of DLC where previous games had as well. Okay. So, I mean, it, d- it doesn't totally surprise me it's happened. It's disappointed me that bio, like a, a Bioware <coughs> game would suffer that same outcome, but yeah, I, don't know. I guess I'll I've- wait for Anthem. I, I, that's what I think. I think it. I think it, what it does. It showed. So, um, EA, right? EA, yeah. yeah. So, like, like EA, uh, they're they're sort of a well-oiled machine when it comes to their games. As in, like, this is the set. This is the line that we we set for everything. This is how it works. We we FIFA. We're Madden. We're NHL. We're you know. Then we have occasional little we're NBA. Things. NBA. No, nah, fuck NBA. We'll let Two K do with that. But we've yeah. got the other ones. We'll just rip a game from store shelves two days before it comes out because it's a pile of crap see but that, see that's I both. love that story see though. like that's such a good story I, I, I didn't know about that story because obviously I don't, I don't care too much about NBA but when I heard about that like as in reviewers, reviewers had, had it, it. reviewers Scores reviews were, were written were ready to go. everything was ready to post and like no he's pulling it it's done we, we realise it's crap nah that's Kill awesome it. I want to have a copy of it oh, me too I guess I've never played I'm like this is the copy of the ghost yeah <clears throat> um, but yeah so it's kind of cool that they have the sort of the curation as you sort of mentioned earlier to be like nah we've kind of stepping away from yeah. this this had its time it didn't do too well it's just going to be a PR nightmare trying to get yeah. this now there was a season pass and stuff that came came with it yeah, yeah and I think it's all multiplayer now I didn't pick it up because I was waiting to see what got announced okay because I saw that because I know I, th- I from, think there was one from Sorry. the set of the of patch you do have the little uh, buggy on, on, yes. on your desk um, so that was that wasn't the collector's edition didn't come with season pass sort of uh, not that I recall but I might, I might have cashed something in and didn't pay any attention I was just like <laughs> DLC cool throw it in there let me just start the game so yeah so you're a little bit a little bit devastated about this oh look yeah I, I really like Mass Effect uh, the franchise itself the DLC for all three games has been exceptional in the past so I was really hopeful that we'd get some more quality stuff with this one too <clears throat> turns out we're not just not getting quali- you know dodgy stuff we're not getting any so alright better luck next time he, he, uh, see in 10 years when they decide to bring the franchise back even like No Man's Sky right a game that got obliterated like even they're still doing some sort of back end like they're yeah. patching things in and they're they're working on it behind the scenes no one's caring but they care enough to continue to do it and I think that but they depend on that dollar being independent, more yeah. versus Bioware for starters who already had Anthem in development who's already working on New Dragon Age and then has Old Republic as well and is under the EA umbrella they can be like oh fine we'll just we'll chalk this one up as a loss and we'll just move on yeah which um, which will have they've, they've devastating got that cash effects. to do it yeah so. true 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 like we'll have devastating effects for andromeda uh sorry yeah. for mass effect franchise as a yeah. whole <clears throat> um and i think it will take away because uh bioware montreal was like a secondary studio they're like we'll give you the chance we'll yeah. give you the chance step up maybe you're ready to go didn't work no that's a bad idea I was really hopeful actually for this to be similar to kind of the Naughty Dog Last of Us Uncharted situation where you know had they had Uncharted 3 and Last of Us in development simultaneously mm. until of course Uncharted 3 finished and the remainder moved across I was really hopeful that this was the formation of another awesome um, studio at Bioware they were going to continue the Mass Effect franchise and look they may yet still do it but at the moment not, maybe you're not ready we'll pull you back up yeah. and I think, um, I think Mass Effect will case stay of Last of Us and Uncharted look what, they, look what happened to them <laughs> love him dude if Josh is here right now like Josh will uh, talk to death about Naughty Dog if he can yeah as will I but I won't though I'll... it's your show I appreciate it <laughs> speaking of death uh, Dino Patty, former CEO and co-founder of Play Dead the developer behind Inside and Limbo has, has also died a new game whoa <laughs> spoiler 
because I, I, I if that was the news, I was in the wrong tone of voice. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Good Real news, bubbly he's better. dead." <laughs> Summerville is the product of a collaboration between Patty and Chris Olsen and, quote, a seasoned feature film uh, animator turned developer going to release from Jumpship. The studio behind the new game described as a sci-fi action adventure game and Summerville chronicles the lives of key individuals in the wake of a global catastrophe. I loved Inside. I thought Inside was fantastic. First game I gave a 10 out of 10. That ending, though. I couldn't get around that. Oh, I have no idea what happened, but I enjoyed uh, it. I... <clears throat> Yeah, it was just so ambiguous it's and so shit. ridiculous that uh, this kind of that killed. Oh, it's still a brilliant game, but that killed it a little bit for me. At that point, I was loving it. I was loving the puzzles. Everything had been brilliant. Then that happened. Oh, I can't justify this. <laughs> <laughs> I remember I, if I remember right, I did. Limbo's awesome. I did sit there and map out what it meant. Like I thought about it, and I was like, "This is what I think it means." I had stuff written on paper. Could I tell you right now what I remember? What, what I thought it meant at the time? I got no idea. I had stuff written on paper and I couldn't work out what was going on, so I just reviewed it and didn't address the ending at all. Like, <laughs> I, I think I just said, I don't know what the hell that was. Let's move on. Something to that extent. Maybe what I said as well. I yeah. think it's like we'll leave it up. Leave it up. I think I was very, I was very open ended. Yeah, I was very uh, like uh, early games. Like, yeah. It's up to you. It's the ending that you want, rather than be like, what the fuck was that? <laughs> um, but yeah, that was just more bit of news. I thought it was interesting because I'd I'd love to see what because if, if if he was involved with play dead in sort of the creation of limbo and insight obviously he's not with them anymore but if that uh what's the for that dna comes with him yeah i'm really curious to see what's yeah i did hear there's some stuff like there's already a little bit of concept stuff floating around from this new studio this new game and yeah. apparently it really channels that limbo inside play nice. dead sort of tone aesthetic so hopefully that rubs off Totally cool with that. Speaking of developers leaving places, uh, Raf, this is just another quick bit of news as well. Raphael Colin Tonio, Colin, yeah, Colin, uh, president of Dishonored and uh, of Prey developer Arcade Studios, has announced he is stepping down from his position. "Quote to spend some time with my son and reflect on what is important to me in my future." I can relate to that. Uh, Colin Tano made uh, Colin Tonio, yeah, Colin Tonio made the announcement in a post on Bethesda Software website. Uh, Colin Antonio explained that his co-director on the original Dishonored and director of Dishonored 2, Harvey Smith, will oversee the Austin-based team with Colin Antonio. I'm, I'm sure I've said that wrong every time uh, and different every time. There's not enough of this when you're doing it. Colin Antonio will be around for as long as necessary to ensure a smooth transition to the new management team in Le Lion, Le whatever. Lion? Lion? L-Y-O-N? Question mark? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, that's pretty cool. Like, I like his reasoning. His reasoning's fine. Um, yeah, and it'll be just like Cliffy B in the end. Like, he'll he'll step back into the industry at some point. And, yeah, he'll come I mean, back. he doesn't have the profile that Cliffy does, but he'll step back in. He'll probably form his own little studio, and they'll start to build from there, and be fine. But at the moment, that's what he needs. So yeah. good on him. And some quick PlayStation updates. Uh, new PS4 colors are available in the wild, with the gold and the silver available for five hundred nine dollars ninety five cents. Australian comes with a additional DualShock 4. I don't personally care about colored consoles. If uh, uh, if I then go to sell the gold one later, does that have more value than the silver one? Uh, middle joke. It, <laughs> <laughs> and I don't teach science. Piss that shit off. Uh, and PlayStation have also announced, oh, and kind of inadvertently just did it without telling you, updated the TV and video section of the thing. What's it called? Uh, the console. Yeah. Uh, so now, rather than just having a bunch of squares that tell you, go, you get to go to exactly what you want. It has this featured content thing. Uh, you know, it's this big square. Big. It's it's like five lines of assorted garbage, and you with very small squares up the top <laughs> where you pick what you want. Um, I came home. And because my wife knows I get all the PR and things, she's like, what the fuck happened to the video on the PlayStation? <laughs> Something's like, changed. I don't like it. I'm like, oh, no, let me check my phone. Apparently they oh, upgraded. Yeah. Sure, they broke it. I'm like, apparently they changed it. Sorry. Because <laughs> I've, I've been home like three minutes at this point. What the hell? The world's <laughs> imploding. Because ah. <laughs> like, uh, we, cause we're, we're sneaky and we use a VPN for the Netflix. Yeah. Um, and the console is the... Australian one so the TV's not working I can't watch Netflix go to watch Netflix on the Playstation and it's all rooted what's happening the tables being flipped and <laughs> babies crying and <laughs> like, look what happened it made the baby cry Playstation just send them a video 
<laughs> uh, and last, almost the last one. So the PS Plus uh, games were announced for the month of July with Until Dawn, uh, Game Get of Thrones, it. the Telltale Game series, both for PS4, Tokyo Jun- Jungle for the PS3, Darkstalkers Resurrection for PS3, Element 4L for the Vita, Don't Die, Mr. Robot, PS Vita uh, with a cross by for PS4, and P. Uh, sorry, and for PS4, a game called That's You, which is the first in the Play Link Link. range that was announced. This is actually a really good month. Yeah, that's a Uh, fucking solid I I don't actually reap too many benefits from it. I've got Until Dawn. I've got Game of Thrones. I'd barely touch my PS3 anymore. Yeah. Unless I'm going back to replay something for a specific reason. But if you haven't played Until Dawn, it's one of the best games of this generation. Game of Thrones is not Telltale's best work. But But if if you're a fan of the Game of Thrones series, yeah, yeah. and so I thoroughly enjoyed it. (laughs) Um, and there's got six episodes in that one, not just the five that were used used to. Bam! Bonus games. freebie so bonus, there. Yeah, it's well, a freebie on a freebie. Ex- except that they charged you extra for that season, so that's a bit shit. Well, then it's not so free now, is it? <laughs> sure. It is this month. But I'm keen for that's you as well. So this is the quick rundown. Is that's you combines over a thousand questions and involves drawing, posing, laughter, and innuendo as you innuendo as you find out how well you really know your friends. It was essentially the Jackbox Party Pack, yeah. but, but PlayStation. Um, it's a tabable market. Yeah, that comes out on the 4th of July, which is what? Tuesday? Tuesday, yeah. Um, so obviously, I, I'm curious to shit about that. Um, I'll think we'll spend some time with it and it'll be a nice little community game, I think. Uh, and closing off the news, which was a little bit extended because, you know, Josh Lomer keeps on track. Um, the top 10 PS4 games in Australia were at number 10, Morrowind, the expansion for Elder Scrolls Online. You number got that n- list upside down. Yeah, because... Thanks, Josh. Uh, number nine, Overwatch. Number eight, Ghost Recon Wildlands. Number seven, Battlefield 1. Number six, Tekken 7. That's confusing. Number five, Doom. Number four, Call of Duty Infinite Warfare for some reason. Number three, GTA 5. What the hell? Number two, Horizon Zero Dawn. And number one, Dishonored 2. So who have Bethesda paid off this month <clears throat> to have seen Doom and Dishonored rocket back up? I have a feeling they're both on sale. With, this, with, with the Australian with the Australian uh, best selling games, you can really tell what games are on sale, yeah. and you can really tell the GTA is still there for some reason. Because it's GTA and COD's always there because it's COD. Battlefield, fair enough. Horizon, thrilled to see that's there. Yeah, well, that that was uh, number one last week. Yeah, and I know you guys have been uh, raving about the fact that AFL Evolution's been on the list. I'm so glad that's done. Uh, I, I love AFL. Um, right, uh, right now Geelong <clears throat> is playing, probably losing to Greater West Sydney, but. Uh, so if, if you were, I'm, if I'm you were relieved smart, that game is not times released. a week when you've come to Geelong and go to the same place. Yeah, just piss off and go watch the game. <coughs> like I say, oh. Because, you know, we established in last week's episode, you have no idea where I'm from and it took me about <laughs> five weeks to commute over here Yeah, the, like, the yeah, northest point as, of Queensland. As far Queensland. as I knew, you backpacked, you hitchhiked, <laughs> and, you know, and you're like, no, it's about an hour away. <laughs> come on, lift. <clears throat> yeah, we'll, so we'll write, write about video <laughs> games for lifts, you know. But yeah, like I said, I, for me, Among I was things. more impressed that they lasted that three or four weeks that they did. Yeah. For me, uh, for me, that was just a testament. I was like, no, no, Australia, you've backed. You've backed what you should have. Although we're not, we're not big sports guys. I just like the idea that the, the Australian public got behind it. Oh, look, I think it's just the fact that, you know, unlike FIFA or 2K or any of, you know, mm. any of those big profile sporting games, we only get AFL games or cricket games or rugby games, whatever it is, every three years maybe thereabouts yeah and so because the, the, then there's no budget when one comes out it's good just and... here's my finally my chance it's the first one for this console generation yeah. so go for it I got it I wish I didn't <laughs> sorry guys yeah it was alright points right. for effort we'll come We'll come back to the laptop now because speaking of this console generation there's a side there's a side little thing that's a horrible fucking segue so bad so this is where we head into the main topic of the show which we still don't have a name for it yet so uh Pre- jono was here last uh not last week the week before uh he didn't give us a new title we asked him to use his creative mind didn't tots to- yeah, we, <laughs> we, we, we're doing our very best to distance ourselves from the uh, you know as not distance but like try not to be it so uh we call it tots privately yeah. <laughs> and i just dropped it they, this was not a conversation they had with me beforehand i just <laughs> tried to go for a reaction and got one so <laughs> so with uh nintendo announcing the the to the surprise of no one release of the super nintendo mini yep let's pivot that to playstation very simple question what do we want to see on the playstation one mini if it were to release the greatest game ever made 
Final Fantasy Nine. I thought you were going to go with Half Moon right now, but uh, Sorry, that's it's fine. Number, it's number but, two. So Half Moon. Uh, fuck. Final Fantasy Nine. I can't stop talking about. Yeah, it. Moon. It's Final Fantasy Nine. Uh, which one's that? The final one for the PS One. Um, kind of an homage to everything that came beforehand. It kind of married some of the newer elements. All right, with, now there was one Final the Fantasy game that I played. Medieval style sort of stuff. Um, you got a little monkey boy. No, I don't. Um, I don't think that's black the one I played. That keeps falling over. Uh, uh, the princess trying to get her out of the castle and. Well, plead the case to the camera on why that game should just, be there. Just no, I'm the, I don't need to plead. Everyone knows it. It's the best game ever made. Get around it. Um, so. Yeah, it's, it's the... Fo- uh, oh, I have the just throwing the wrong Roman numeral in there anyway, but... Um, well, because I was trying to find the one that I'm thinking of. Oh. Because um, it the wasn't one seven. The school. There was... Because I remember, I remember the, a, a demo. I had a demo disc of a Final Fantasy game, and I think... It, I thought it was eight. Seven's the famous one. That's the one yeah, that's and there wasn't that one. Sephiroth being remade. On the cover, it was Final Fantasy, and over the middle logo wasn't... Because the asteroid that was blue was seven. Seven. And there was the one that was like a dude, and it was red, and he had cool shit. I can't remember what the little logo was for it, but basically, eight had a whole bunch of different school students in it. Or they started out of school and then they kind of pissed off from there. Uh, and then nine is the one that said, "This is the greatest game of all time" on the cover. Um, <laughs> sorry, I, I'm gonna. I regularly Actually, I get told we should I'm write wrong. these down so we can make our official list. Yes, without without Josh, so it's one representative. Of- I look. I gave Josh. I reached out to him. I said, "Hey, this is the topic." This is what we're planning on doing. I did see it. I was in the chat. You Tell us what your what your Josh, you had the opportunity. What you what you think your your game will be, and he didn't say shit, so he gets no power in this. So Final Fantasy, uh, nine. Good on you. Use the Roman numeral numeral not the number. <laughs> yeah, man. Took me Mats. a second to think about it, but uh, now of course, look, fuck it. Harvest Har- Moon. Harvest Moon. Now the rules of this, there are no rules. We can do it with it. We can do with this as we want. Never speak of the PS One Mini. Yeah. Like it's like Fight Club. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. apart from like we can't talk about this once we leave the room. Uh, it's Except just for all that, of you who've been watching the episode. We can just have fun with it. We can pick what we think. So it's not as if like what what is logistically going to be on there. We can just have yeah, fun we can with just, it. Yeah. So an example is like I don't think the Crash Bandicoot should be on there. We've got the we've got the remasters. We don't need it. But you made a brilliant point of what Crash game should be on there. Crash Team Racing. As I type it. I swear he didn't give me that little segue, but it worked beautifully. Appreciate it. I think it should be Crash Team Racing because simply because I don't think we're going to see it on the remaster. I don't think it's going to get the remake. Uh, so I think this would be the great way. In the same way, the 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 mini Schnez has Super Mario Kart. Yep. It should have a racer on here of some sort. And we probably should put Gran Turismo on there, but fuck it. I don't like it. I don't like racing It's not games. going there. Yeah, and that's the that's the okay racing game, and and we can kind of do whatever we want with it. Yeah, it's our, our list. list. Go away. Don't go away, please. Hang around. <laughs> but at the same time, PlayStation, if you see the list and like it, hire us. Yeah, that'd be cool. I'll quit my job. Yeah. My, my year twelves don't need the education. No, screw them. What are they going to do? They're going to play games anyway. Yeah. If they don't, if they if they don't get an if edu- there's one thing they've learned from me, pretending to know what you're talking about video games is a viable option. What's your next one? Uh oh, geez, let's throw Castlevania in there. Symphony of the Night. I will just go. Done. I'm gonna play Symphony of the Night. Symphony of the Night. I haven't even finished it, but it's but I know it to be a brilliant game. Yeah, I know it to, be, to, to of it. sort of to be the uh, pinnacle. The pinnacle. It is one of the uh, genre setting. Yeah, it's a big genre genre definer. Um, let's see what else we got on there. Oh, of course. Well, I've apparently got all my capitals backwards. Metal Gear Solid. Never heard of it. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's a joke. Yeah, I, mean, I thought I knew. I'm like, it hurt me. It's a little bit too much. <laughs> um, <laughs> look, I, I'm really concerned about how I'll treat this list because for me, the Super Nintendo and the PS1 were all JRPG consoles. That's so fine. I'll, I'll try and refrain from that for now. And let's throw Spyro in, Spyro in there Spyro? for the platformer. Oh yeah, oh yeah, good. I like that Spyro. Let's, let, I'm trying to appeal to all audiences. We've got our so we're, we're going to farmers. The they're happy. We've got our mm. mega dorks that are happy with Final Fantasy Nine, and everyone. I'm gonna go with Silent Hill. Oh yeah, get a nice spooky one in there. Not a big horror spooks. person, but I've I've kind of come around a little bit since having played uh, Resident Evil Seven early in the year. Yeah, you find it. Really loved it. Yes, yeah, good. Was, I got the review given to me, and went, Paul, you're one of two people at the side who have PSVR. You want to take this on it? No. See that? See. Oh man. But, all right. So part of our Patreon is that we have a 
community stream like, yeah. sorry patreon stream so anyone that's a patreon they pick what we stream and we'll do it all together um and so i was like what do you guys want to do for the month of june now mind you it's almost july because we were busy uh it's like what do you want to do can you stream resident evil in vr I'm like, <laughs> sucked in sure nothing would please me more <laughs> they're like okay it's like, terrifying it was horrifying VR. man um, but like again, so the one thing about it is it gave this great sense of scale. I thought it was fantastic. Yeah, so I started playing the game in VR first when I mm. began to do the review. So at that that beginning period where you haven't kind of learnt the rules of how they want to ski was when I was getting scared the most. I should have started playing it normally and then <laughs> flick VR on once I kind of knew what I was expecting. Was that later in the game? Duck around the corner. No worries. Yeah. What's what, next? What's, ne- what's next on your list? Oh Jesus. Shane Warne Cricket 99. No. Done. No. Oh, yeah, I've got some mates that really appreciate me mentioning that. Um, Suikoden 2. Yep, done. I have no idea how... That's S- S-U-I-K-O-D-O-N. I don't know. Have you played it? Yeah, love it. Love it? Love it. Absolutely adore it. Done. Awesome. See, um, that's, see, that's, that's why it's okay. But, you know, I, I guess then, with the Nintendo being Shikoden Japanese. Yes, <laughs> Yeah, sure. I added a K apparently. I don't know. And you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, look, I think that's fine. I think to be able to have some extra JRPGs, and I think it's not a problem at all. Yeah. I'm going to go with one that, this is, once again, this is our list. We thought the hell we want. I'm going to have to actually consult the internet. Just that's fine. I'm going to go with Grand Theft Auto, the original. Simply because <clears throat> I know there's, I imagine there's many, many people that haven't spent the time with the original Grand Theft Auto. They've never had the top down. They've never, tr- yes, they've never I seen haven't. it personally really no. wow like i said that was one of the games i loved on my playstation one uh but with my i think my, with most people entry entry point to grand theft auto being grand theft auto 3 i think it's sort of a great throw to understand and understanding where the origins that franchise of has come from that would make sense i think it'd be a great introduction oh look sweet and two is on the list has it spelled correctly s-u-i-k-o-d-e-n two i nailed it by accident and you sort of spelled there's it. A, there's an H in there. <laughs> Shit, where's the H there's, go? Oh. There isn't one. <laughs> oh, Sheikadin. Oh, yeah, Sheikadin. <laughs> um, let me think. Let me think. Throw what another one in there because I'm I'm trying to think of something that's not an RPG, honestly. That's that's my mm. biggest issue at the moment. I we love need, my PS5. We need a sports but... game because sports thing's good. I did, like, I, did like your shame, I did like your Shame War cr- Cricket. Then, then let's do it. The official list has Shame War Cricket 99. Okay, why not? This is, this is the Australian one. Look, I personally loved it. I had a great time with it. I recognise it's crap, but done. Why not? I was going to go with uh, Tony Hawk Pro Skater Two. Oh yeah, why did I not think of that? Well, then I'll I'll throw one in that you actually suggested before. Mm. Legacy of Kane. Oh yeah, Legacy of Soul Reavers. Specifically, Kane, is that the one you're Soul thinking Reaver, of? Which I yeah. <clears throat> hmm. Hmm. And there's a solid a solid audio and video. So hmm. Just jump on YouTube. Check out his thinking face. Hmm. It's real deep. Real meaningful. And do we have do we have any fighters on there at all? Do we want fighters? No, Tekken 3. Tekken 3 is a must. Tekken 3 is one of my favorite games of all time, and it, and it deserves to be on that list. Taking it back to the streets. Hey! Um, Take, taking it to the uh, next look, level. Look, I've got to throw it in there. It's not my favorite Final Fantasy, given we've established that 9 is the greatest game of all time, but Final Fantasy 9 belongs... Uh, sorry, 7 belongs in there. <laughs> I can't help but talk about Ooh, 9. Do we put like, do we put 7 well, in do there? We, do we, have, that do we re- have multiple? Knowing that that remake is coming in 30 years from oh, now. Like, yeah. Do we... yeah, but that's the thing. We're waiting 30 years for it. Yeah. Yeah, all right, let's axe it. Tactics then. Okay, done. Because the console, the mini could do with a good tactical game. Yeah, it it's, uh, sort of needs that. Um, hmm. Is it because <laughs> I'm thinking about games that I grew up with on the on on the uh, on the PlayStation? That's my so. biggest problem here. Like, uh, <clears throat> otherwise, you get a twenty long list of RPGs from me. So, because <laughs> like I'm trying to think of the shit that I played. Like, I played Tarzan. I played Dave Mira Pro Style BMX. I played Army Men Sarge's Heroes. This list is not helping me at all. <laughs> <laughs> I just see shit we've already Ooh, mentioned, and then here we go. A games. random, uh, a random JRPG that I played, Breath of the Wild, uh, Breath, Breath, not Breath, oh, of the Wild, Breath, Breath of Fire, Fire Four. Yeah, yeah, throw that in there. No, not Breath of the Wild. Fuck. No, that one. I don't remember anything about that game. I remember playing a shit ton of it and really enjoying it at the time. Works for me. Like I said, that list didn't help me, so I'm, I'm mm. hitting a bit of a wall. Well, look, we wanted 20. We've got sports. We've got... We're up to 15 at this point. 
Can we well, throw something more in there? Nothing springs to mind immediately. Oh, see, so like, like Wipeout is a big one, but yeah. just got the remake, just got the remaster. True. I wouldn't put it on the list. Yeah, good point. Hmm. Well, this, let's, let's, let's this look. is a glorious console, the PS One, and we've just <clears> hit. <throat> yeah. Wall. Well, I said once again, one of those the things is like when someone wall. showed me a list of games, I'd be like, yeah, that one and that one and that one, and that one. On the top of the head. Not doing so well. And also, we made up this topic just as I was jumping in the car. Yeah, interview, pretty much. So. I was like, oh, God, this would be a cool idea. Um, so this is, <laughs> this is the list that we have so far. Final Fantasy IX. Harvest Moon Back to Nature. Crash Team Racing. racing uh, Castlevania, Symphony of the Night. Metal Gear Solid. Spyro. Silent Hill. Swigged in 2. Grand Theft Auto. Shame on Cricket 99. Yes. Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2. Real. Legacy of Cain. Soul, Legacy of Kane, Soul Reaver, Tekken 3, Final Fantasy Tastic, Tactics, and Breath of Fire 4. Now, for the life of me, I can't think of any other games. So what, what I'm going to do is we're going to end it there at 15. And you throw it to them. And we'll throw it to these guys. We'll let, we'll let you guys pick the final four. And then for the next episode, we'll have the definitive list. I like it. And that way we can... We can, so we can we, can I imagine people will be like... Get Silent Hill out of there. But like, I reckon there'll be a unanimous decision that Shane Wall Cricket 99 needs to stay. So that'll be fine. Good. Yeah. I was wondering where you are going with it. We need Shane Wall Cricket 99. Okay, everyone will be like, no, no, that's cool. That's, that's totally valid. I think that should stay there. But speaking of throwing it to you guys, as we jump into the the next segment of the show, which is called From the Players. It's where those lovely people at home, like yourself, have uh, thrown questions at us and we give you our two cents. What have you got for us? This first question comes from Jess. She says, with the revival of Crash and the insane hype around the SNES Mini, how likely do you think a revival of 90s games is? Well, first of all, with the list of games that we just put on the Mini PS1, fucking solid. The hype is real. I feel like it's already happening though. This yeah. like um, retro is cool. Everyone loves retro. Uh, the publishers themselves are leaning on nostalgia heavily at the moment. Yeah. That's why we're seeing things like Crash and we're seeing a whole bunch of other remasters, Final Fantasy VII, and those sorts of things. And then what Nintendo is doing with the NES and SNES Mini and like lean, uh, you know, going back to the well on some of their old established IP. I mean, Metroid is not one that should have been as quiet as it has been mm. but it's been quiet for a while and they're bringing it back just because people love it there's an audience there clamoring for it see i strongly like, i i'm very i am very quite i'm quite nostalgic myself but i also have a really strong issue against uh art or entertainment being ran solely by nostalgia yeah like that's, that's agree that. like that's the reason we have six transformers movies for some reason you know what I mean? Like, there's a like there's a reason we they remade Ghostbusters. You know what I mean? Like, all these sort of bad decisions, and I'm sure there's some good decisions in there as well, like 21 Jump Street, solid decision. Um, but it's just... But it's, it's, at the same time, I'm very, it's a touchy topic, I'm very yeah. hypocritical because I fucking hate nostalgia. If I, I love Crash. <laughs> I love Crash Bandicoot and that remaster is so good. So it's like, it's a personal conflict, yeah. you know? But like... It's I, a, it I is just, easy to cash in on. I, look, I, um, and it, the fans love it. And until it gets to a point where we, and I say we as a consumer base, stop buying these things, they'll keep doing I think that's the biggest problem as well, is people sort of like knowing... It's it's safe. It, you know it. And that's the benefit of nostalgia. Like, uh, But if, you know... I personally dislike this whole, you know, only 90s kids will remember this guy. Yeah. Just, I'm like, what the fuck, man? But then I think about it. The 90s is almost 30 years ago. My students were telling me all about how they're going to pick up Crash this week. That that made me really happy. As someone who's... I mean, look, we said it before. I haven't actually played a Crash game. We'll, we'll rectify this later. Yeah. But um, uh, to have my kids saying, I can't wait to play Crash. I'm like, this is kind of what, I guess... The, uh, that was what they're going for. Us, in, with our particular positions within the games industry. Um, <laughs> or, uh, like... That's awesome stuff to hear that it's not just us that's reminiscing. It's these other kids that are being exposed to these games and going, I like the look of that. Yeah, and it's, and it's going to give the benefit to, like, myself, uh, you know, come three, four years from now when, when my son's old enough to understand games, I can sit down with him and I can show him Crash. Like, it'd be near impossible for me to show him the old Crash simply because, one, I have to pull out my PS3, which would be long dead by yeah. then. The Vita, it's already dead. 
So I can't, I can't give him the dun, Vita. Dun, 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 you know, I can't, I can't give him the Vita to play the old Crash on. So I was like, the, the, the PS4 should be able to survive another couple of years. Yeah. In terms of tech wise, it won't crash out on. Yeah, I thought. Pun it. intended. <laughs> Did it? Uh, look, is it? I, I is it? I don't think publishing developers are should. I don't think they should be relying solely on nostalgia, but they are anyway. And the, the thing we need to be careful of too, like. I don't think any of these be it Crash Final Fantasy 7 might have a chance of shifting these sorts of numbers I'm talking about but like these sorts of remasters or remakes aren't going to be shifting tens of millions of copies mm. you've got your particular little hardcore audience that wants Crash you've got another audience that's right out there for Metroid say you've got another audience that's for um, Spyro if that yeah. ever comes about Tony Hawk when the, uh, when it did its uh, remaster for PS3 and 360 like there's these little pockets that love it and they all run to that whatever that game is and grab it or shuffle towards it whatever well looking, um, looking at our next question so Buddy Watson champion Buddy Watson uh, comes he said because he works at uh, JB Hi-Fi so he says we have sold out of Crash at our store and sales figures are looking strong because you sort of mentioned like these you know these smaller games it's kind of for small niche yep. people but on the back of this would you prefer crash team racing remastered or a new crash also if it's a new crash how would uh, how and what would the game be like to kill them or both <laughs> <laughs> no, i mean who's to say that they might not have, like there was something teased in trophies i still not played yeah the there was rumor there was that there was some that- sort of there may be some DLC coming. Yeah, maybe, it, maybe it's uh, Team Racing's coming as DLC, but, I mean, you'd rather see a new Crash. See... I think, personally, but I'm someone who hasn't played it. So. The problem, the biggest problem is everyone has nostalgia for 1, 2, and 3. Everyone sort of disregards the rest because that's when it changed hands, yeah. when, when it went away from Naughty Dog, and it sort of it lost its identity and lost its... It, the it, same happened to Spyro at the same time. Exactly, right? So that's when they, Activision picked up Spyro and Crash. Um, so from in... Was it, not in, was it Insomniac? Yeah, Insomniac had Yeah, Spyro. from Insomniac and Naughty Dog. Um, so I, I, if there is a new Crash, it won't have the same heart, and as a result, it won't do as well. Yeah. So I think... If for Crash as a franchise, it's safe for them to play it safe. Go with what you know, remake these, and then keep it a distance. I don't know. I mean, you could also make the argument going the other way. Look what's happening with... Uh, is it Sonic Mania at the moment? The mm. one that, like... I'm not a Sonic fan at all, but those who are that I've spoken to about it are raving about what they're seeing in Sonic Mania and apparently it's a game made by the hardest of hardcore Sonic fans. They were basically just little modders and whatnot before and then they got picked up Sega... Got on, got on the phone or the email to them, and but the other, here's the a other studio side now formed that. to recreate the Sonic that people know and love, yeah. and maybe it's going to work. So maybe, I mean, with what we're seeing out of this remastered work with mm. um, Crash, maybe you could see similar sorts of projects for Crash and other IP. But the other side of that is like we've had so many bad Sonic games, yeah. people are like clamoring. Yeah. For this like crash has been a somewhat of a dead franchise and even now with the remaster we're seeing what a new up-to-date crash looks like so if they release a new one that's in the same vein even looks the same it's like well it's more of the remaster yeah. like you know it's probably too close where yeah, sonic enough. mania is we have we have not seen a, a sonic game that looks like this since the originals yeah. i think that's the certain strength of, of yeah, sonic that's mania. that's true that's a good point moving on joel asked uh th- once again keeping a very there's very similar thread a theme in our in our questions this week this week was a good week for gaming nostalgia uh we got the snes mini crash bandicoot and a uh cod 4 remaster the those released sound yeah. uh but at what point does the value of the consumer become a cash grab because they know people will buy it Crash is possibly the best game out right now in terms of value. All that content remade from the ground up and some people are picking it up for as little as 40 bucks. Whereas Call of Duty is a graphical remaster, requires a map purchase for the complete experience plus microtransactions and is retailing in Australia for $70. It's hard to believe both games are from the same parent company. And what's worse about the Call of Duty situation is the Xbox owners can't actually get the game yet, like the Modern mm. Warfare remaster, unless you bought it in the original yeah. thing. Yeah. So, I, first of all, I think 70 bucks is fucked. Yeah. Well, Crash was meant to be that. Like, EB sells Crash for 70 bucks. Really? I thought it was yeah. 60 bucks. No, I think it's 69.95. Damn, that's garbage. Yeah, uh, and it's only the JB and Big W and basically everyone else under so It's not even that bucks. expensive on the PS4, like on yeah. the store. Yeah, I know. Retail. <laughs> I can't wait till I get NBN. 
<laughs> oh man, we've been here. It's fantastic. Yeah, I live out in the middle of Whoop Whoop as you established yeah, as, last as, week. As, Northern as... Queensland hitchhiking down. Here. <laughs> it's really, it's really hard to get on <laughs> internet when you're on the move. You know, when you when you four G on my phone. When you're nomading that infinite, bad boy. Infinite data plan. Nowhere to charge <laughs> my phone. Look, you said it, it's I. Or my PlayStation. I love that Joel's pointed out the fact they're both from the same parent company. Yeah. I wouldn't. I would have never put two and two together. I would have like, although granted, they're both Activision in yeah. my head, separate, which is really weird. We still link Crash to PlayStation more than yeah, yeah than Activision itself. But um, yeah, it's it's a really strange disparity between those two. Mm. Well, between those two games within the same company, like who'd have thought? I mean, you, you'd expect that sort of behaviour from Activision, but it wouldn't have thought there'd be such a contrast between what they've done with COD and what, the, what they've done here with Crash. Yeah. I it's guess like maybe, I, maybe the Crash thing is the PlayStation influence. Yeah, in the same vein of EA, like Activision are the businessy yeah. game developers. They're there to make money first. And, and then they, granted, all, all developers are. It's, it's a, the game's business, you know. Yeah. Um, it's what feeds their families. That's it, 100%. So it's like, there's no questions in terms of that. But I think the fan service that comes behind Crash is a bit different. Like this, this game came purely out of demand yeah but you know it, it's benefiting from like they're benefiting from it without a doubt well I think it only came about now because clearly Activision gone the demand is great enough that we can warrant the expense and expect a decent revenue out yeah, of it yeah and even then it's outsourced to yeah. Vicarious Vision so it's not as if it was an in-house team anyway yeah. um, so that, that's, that's fine like this Call of Duty thing is just is just blatantly fucked yeah like one of all so the first of all you're Selling a game at almost full price, uh, a ten-year-old game, a ten-year-old game that it does it does look really good, and it was available to a bunch of people last year yeah. anyway. It was, it was you know it was available to people last year anyway. So if anything, it should probably should if it was fifty bucks, I'd pick it up. Twenty bucks, so it's not much. Yeah, and you know, and then on top of that, you then they have the variety map pack from the original or remastered as well, uh, for noticeably more than it was when it was first released, and. Oh, okay. On top of top of that, the game now, now has microtransactions. Yeah, it's not great either. No, it's no. really poor. It's, it's like any box that you want to tick. If you have a list of things that a, a game shouldn't have, that's bad. You know, like what what yeah, are they've ticked every box? Yeah, <laughs> what, what you seem you know sort of deceptive and shitty business practices in the games it's industry. It's all here in it's Call of Duty: Modern Warfare Remastered. All there, all there. I still want to play it though. I don't, but I don't like Call of Duty. <laughs> I have strong, I have very good memories of Call of Duty Four, and like that's and that, the closest that's the I've come to personal liking conflict Call of Duty that I have yeah. to it. Though World War Two looks pretty sweet. Oh, it looks quite. Oh, World War Two is like right up alley. But that's all our questions now. If you want to uh, ask any questions for from the players, you know, Facebook.com, all those sort of things, we will get the wrap up in the end. Now, before we finish the show completely, we always jump into the drop. Uh, which we've named coming to the players, which is really sexually Real charged. So we kind of want to rename it inside the players. That's totally, <laughs> that's totally better. Uh, very small list this week. First up, we've got, uh, energy cycle, a game for the PS4 Vita. It's a real aggressive looking cat. PS4 thing. Vita, PS Vita. It's a puzzle game by the looks. We've got Ninja Usagi. You're the Re- Usagi Maru. Yep, there you go. The Tales, uh, two Tales of Adventure. The Vita. So two Vita games this week. Save the Ninja Clan for PS4. Uh, Speed Runners for PS4. What is? This? And that's you for PS4 as well. That's the one that was the free one. That's the freebie. Uh, and Toby the Secret Mine for PS4. That's it. That was a damn small week. None of those are next market, no, that's None for sure. None of that is interesting. Except for that's you. But it's free anyway for PlayStation Plus. Yeah, so don't worry about paying anything. That's Just true. cash in at the end of the month. Save your money. Go buy Crash this week. And bank for... No, go get ne- next market. Yeah, do, do it, that. do it, do it. Anyway, that brings us to the end of the show. How'd you, how'd you find it? Uh, I'll just, you know, give Josh some sort of illness every week and I'll keep coming back. <laughs> that's fine. You only have to travel hours and days to get oh, here. Fine. It's fine. Uh, but no, no, thank you very much for coming on and taking the, the place of Sick Josh. Thank you for having me. No worries, man. Tell all the fine folk where they can find your wares. So, uh, personally, you'll find me at Paul James P2 on Twitter. But in terms of the website itself, player2.net.au, uh, yeah, hit up player2.net.au on YouTube as well. Please like, share, and subscribe. It'd be great. Uh, I've already spoken about the shows, so I won't go through all those again. Um, and then player2au on Twitter to keep up with all our rolling updates. Whatever so, so you guys are, all, are, are the more solid traditional media as in you've got the written you're, you're jumping in the yeah, video I, but yeah, you guys I'm, are predominantly I'm written I'm trying to lead us a bit more in terms of video we, we love we, we've got that written base we've got a lot of we've got a surprisingly large number of academics <laughs> um, working working in the background there uh, when it comes to the written side but yeah. we're slowly broadening that out and then as uh, more and more people get the means to kind of 
either stream or or record their own shows like I'm doing. We're just slowly building that out. Like I, I mean, if you've seen any of my videos, they're not the greatest quality in terms of video. Like I just don't have those means yet. But um, not not like this. This is fantastic. I, I love what's going on here. <laughs> Thrilled that I can be here to actually experience it and long for what I don't have. Um, uh, but the answer is like, death. We're, the we're, answer we're, is death. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, probably not this year. I'm getting married, so... Yeah. Um, uh, look, it's it's getting there. It's great. Uh, but please, yeah, like, share, and subscribe. Visit the site. Yeah. It'd be awesome. It's great stuff. Great. Go check out Player 2. That's the one. Dot .au. Dot .net. Dot .au. But if you, like, if you like that conversation, go to Facebook, uh, Twitter, Instagram. That's about it, I think. Uh, and, oh, man. Dude, this is where I need Josh. He, he's I, I, This is where I zone out. I'm like, okay, cool. What, what's the next thing I have to think of? Groups.com uh, slash the pop culturists. <laughs> yeah, so facebook.com slash the pop culturist. Uh, like and subscribe to the YouTube channel, Twitter, Instagram, all the social uh, all the social medias. We've got uh, audio versions of, on iTunes and SoundCloud and Stitcher. Uh, and if you really, really like what we do, head to patreon.com slash the pop culturist. Uh, every dollar gets reinvested into this helps us fund microphones like these this. guys are fantastic look they have microphones yeah it's awesome legitimacy and that oh I should probably say who I am I'm Ryan Betson and that was for the players <laughs>